Hi, it's Chris here from L3D Accessories, and today I will be taking you through a review of the Acma P3 laser engraver. Over the last few weeks, I've engraved stainless steel tumblers, aluminium business cards, I've engraved 3D printed parts, I've engraved wooden coasters, three millimeter, six millimeter wooden sheets, I've done cutting tests, I've done rotary tests, I have done the full suite of tests so you guys can get a good, honest opinion on this laser engraver. I've also been carrying out a number of noise tests throughout all of this testing so that you can get a good, accurate representation of the kind of noise levels this machine produces, because I know just how important that is if you've got it in an office or even a workshop environment. The machine came with the two-in-one laser module. That is a two-watt infrared module and a 10-watt diode but I've also got the 48 watt module, which you can see behind me right there. Also sent me the M4 rotary tool, so I'll be putting that for its paces. It goes without saying, if you're here for anything in particular, if you wanna see a material tested, if you wanna see the noise level testing, if you wanna see any of those tested, feel free to skip forward to the part of the video that you are looking for. I will timestamp it. However, you being here and watching all of this video is really helpful to the channel because it really helps us get noticed. So if you do just want to enjoy everything, stay tuned. So that leads me on to my final point. This review was kindly sent to us by ACMA. They haven't had any influence on this video. They haven't actually seen this video, so all of the opinions are my own. I've put it through rigorous testing, and I will tell you exactly what I think about it. So if that's what you're here for, stay tuned, and let's get straight to it. Let me show you some of the specifications that are advertised for this machine. So it's got a huge engraving bed. You can see the uh, dimensions right there and a range of safety features, which we will go into in depth later on. Moving on to the different modules that you can purchase for this machine. And then the absolutely massive range of materials that that range of laser modules can engrave onto. And we've tested a lot of these today, so stay tuned for that. And then finally, we have got an extraction fan which helps draw all of the smoke outwards. You're gonna see the packaging that this thing was delivered in, absolutely beautiful. I found that it was really, really well packaged. I was impressed with how clear it was. All of the documentation was absolutely spot on and exactly what you'd need. Now, what I will say is it is a big machine. I did this by myself, but I'd recommend getting someone to help you unload it. Everything was so beautifully placed within the packaging and everything had a home, which I always like it when companies do that because it just makes it clear and easy to know exactly what you need to unpack. And there really weren't many parts to take out. The machine is 99% assembled when you get it. It even comes with safety glasses and take it from me, not all laser engravers come with those these days. It comes with its own air assist. I got the two-in-one laser module, as you can see there. We've got an accessory package which has lots of various things and a load of materials as well so great this is one of my favorite features the removable honeycomb bed which is an absolute beauty in itself and then finally you've got a hd camera which is compatible with lightburn and the rear extraction fan right there beautiful the next part is really simple this is literally the only assembly required for this and it is plugging the air assist pipe in the pump power for that air assist, and then the main power. And also you'll see here, I've got a longer USB transfer cable. Extraction hose has a great clip that holds it really tightly on the back. The two-in-one laser itself, really well made. It's got a switch that switches between the diode and the infrared, and it's got a little lever which allows you to measure it from the bed, which is exactly what you need. To assemble it, really, really easy. Two thumb screws on the right, slide it down the rail, put it to where you need it, and then tighten them up, and then you've got a power cable, which you just plug in the back. And then finally, you want your air assist hose right in the port there. One great thing about this laser, it's got a really simple user interface. You've got master key, a power switch, and an off button, and that's it. You can't get confused. It's really easy to pick up. So let's move on to the safety features. First of all, you've got a key that is a master override switch. This is great if you don't want unauthorized use or you've got kids around. Then you've got the emergency stop button, which works really well. I had no issues 
then the limit shut off protection. So if you lift it up in operation, it will stop. There is a minor delay, but it will stop. So let's get on some testing. I'm gonna leave you guys to sit back and enjoy this bit. Some really great results from that two-in-one laser there. Now we're gonna switch on to the 48 watt module and we're gonna see what kind of cutting power it's got. As you can see, the module itself is very similar. We've got a switch that allows you to go between the 48 watt and the 24 watt power, which is good. You can step it down if you don't need all that power. Similar outlay though, you've got a removable cover on the front and it fits exactly the same way. So let's get on to the test. I was sent the M4 rotary chuck to test out as well. And the first thing I had to do was obviously assemble it. You can see that it's got a really great instruction guide again. And I followed the instructions and it was really, really simple. I put together other rotary tools and this was much easier. And as you can see here, we're just putting all the attachments. You, you can configure this in so many different ways. So yeah, if you're engraving anything that's spherical, you're gonna have no issues whatsoever. So here we go, we've put it on. Now we are loading up an old tumbler that I've got. But first of all, you'll see I've made these wooden legs. I didn't get sent any legs and you obviously need to raise the machine up because the laser needs to be a certain height away. So I made these and what we'll do is plug in the cable right into this port I'm showing you here. Very simple, it can only go in one way. You can't mess that up. And once that is plugged in, you're good to go. So I will be doing a detailed video how to set things up in Lightburn. So check out the channel for that. But here we go, let's do our test on this tumbler. One thing I really wanted to show you guys was the noise of this machine. The fan does always run, so there is an element of constant noise, but the lid itself does really reduce the noise down. As you can tell right here, 65 decibels as it's in operation. 
let's assess our results and also take a look and make some observations. So I was really impressed with how the IR laser performed on the metals, on the lever, on the slate. It just did a really, really good job to be honest with you and I liked it. The cutting was really good as well. I thought the 10 watt module was actually really good at cutting, but the 48 watt, as you can see there, so fast at cutting, so effective. The IR was also really, really detailed on the business card. I couldn't believe how detailed that Brian Cranston image actually came out. 3D printed materials, also well marked, really, really solid. The stainless steel tumbler, such a sharp, clean engraving on that. You could really produce some works of art with that one. Overall, the spread of materials we've tested and the results that have come out have really, really impressed me. And I can't believe the detail on some of this. And that 48 watt laser cut straight through that thick piece there, which blew me away. I really wasn't sure if it would succeed, but it ate it alive. Absolutely brilliant. So after spending a number of weeks with the Acma P3, I've had a real feel of what it's like. I've got to get to the ins and outs of it, and I've had a really, really good experience learning what's good, what might not be good, and whether or not I'd recommend it. So let me run through the pros and cons to you guys right now. Starting with the pros, I wanna start with the build quality. This machine is really solid, really robust. It's premium materials, and it has a really, really good feel to it. The integration with Lightburn was also really, really good, really simple. Once I ran through the calibration, the camera itself was so accurate. I mean, every item I placed was within inch perfect or millimeter perfect positioning. So the versatility of this machine is also another thing. I had two modules, I had the two in one IR diode module. I also had the 48 watt module. And between those three modules, I was literally able to do every material I tested. Another thing I love was the core XY motion linear aspect of this machine. It's so fast, you can really hit some great speed. The machine itself is a really safe machine as well. Everything's enclosed. It's a class one laser. Yes, there are a few cuts in the side of the machine, which, which the blue laser can escape out of, but you're provided with safety glasses. And also in my experience, X weeks of testing it, I, I didn't have any leakage and I didn't have any issues with it getting in my eyes. The off, the emergency off button, I accidentally pressed it with my belly a couple of times and it switched off straight away. That's why the slate is unfinished, but it worked as it was meant to. If you've got an emergency, that's exactly what you want to do. The large honeycomb is also a great feature. It's so solid, so robust. Um, the fact that you can remove it to clean it is such a good feature because it does get dirty. The fact that you can swap out the laser modules really easily just using two thumb screws is another big positive because you can easily set up and switch between jobs very quickly. Also the rotary tool right there, I really enjoyed using that and it was so versatile. You can set up in so many different ways and using the IR laser that comes with the two in one module and that rotary tool, which was quick and easy to set up by the way, you can just produce some great tumblers, which gives you an option to do, you know, your own personal tumblers or even sell them. You know, that could be your business versatility going forward. The Air Assist is a really great module. And I found that when I was testing and I used it, it gave me such cleaner cuts and it allowed for much less smoke within the enclosure. That leads me on to the actual extraction of it as well. The fan with inside of it, it's not the biggest, but you know, with a good extractor, you can you can push all of that smoke out as you're using the machine, which makes it really good. And, and I also didn't have any leakage of smoke in my workspace as I was using it. That being said, there are a few cons to the machine. The first one that I wasn't a massive fan of is all of the cables come out of the right side of the machine. You've got the air assist hose, the air assist power, you've got the actual main power, and also you have the USB transfer cable. For me, it means that if, you, if you've got limited space, you have to have a good chunk of space to the right of the machine to actually fit all that equipment onto it. I personally would like to see it out the rear of the machine. That being said, you've seen my setup. You know, it's perfectly, work, perfectly workable. It's not a major issue. It's just a nice to have, and it's a personal choice for me. You might like having it all in one area. That's onto you, but you know, that's my opinion out to you guys. Now, another con is that the sound, I mean, it's actually a low sound running machine. Once you're running the machine, it's not too bad, but the, the fan is always on, which means you've always got a constant stream of fan noises. It's not that bad, it's 60 decibels. It's, you know, it's completely manageable. 
but it would be good if you could have the option to at least switch off the fan or turn it off. That could be a great thing to put into a future machine for you, ACMA. But nonetheless, it's not a deal breaker. It really is. I mean, I've got it on right now as I'm speaking to you and it's, it's absolutely fine. Another nice to have. And that leads me on to my final con and it's regarding the honeycomb bed, which I really love, by the way. I said it earlier in the video, but it's not tied down in all four corners, which means you could easily tilt it like that or like that. And in terms of lining up your raven materials, I think it would be a real small, easy improvement to actually tie it down in all four corners so that it's rigid and it can't move. That being said, it didn't move naturally. It's just when you take it out, it's got a bit of a wobble to it. And I think that's an easy, easy fix and improvement that you could do for this machine. Now with the pros and the cons out of the way, I wanted to go on to my conclusion and would I or would I not recommend this machine? So let me start off by telling you my personal feelings about using this machine for the last four to six weeks. I've genuinely really loved using this machine. It's been a real enjoyment. It's been so seamless, so easy to use and really, really effective, really, really productive as well. This is something I will be fitting into my workflow. I will be using it. I don't make many personalized items at the moment, but when I do in the future, because I will be doing that in the future, this machine will be at the forefront of that with my other Galvo lasers. And between the two of those machines, it's so, so productive and so, so effective. I really love the combination of lasers. The two watt infrared, it's not the most powerful, but you don't need it to be. It can engrave metals really well. You can get dark contrast in text. You can get light text. You can do stainless steel tumblers. You can do slate coasters and you can do 3D printed parts, which for me personally is a massive thing that I do do a lot of. You can also whack the mighty 48 watt module on there and cut thick materials. I mean, I cut a 23 millimeter thick piece of wood. As I mentioned in the pros, the build quality of this machine is the other thing I really liked. You know, I'm a heavy handed person. I can be a bit, a bit pushy with the machine sometimes. I can accidentally nudge things or whatever, but this machine held up really well. It was solid. So who do I think this machine is best suited for? I would say it's best suited for hobbyists, makers, and also small businesses. This is perfect. You can do so many things with it. And that leads me on to, would I recommend it? Yes, I would. I think this machine is strong value for money. I mean, they've often got it on sale. And if you do check out my description, you'll see there is an affiliate link which you can purchase the machine through and you would be supporting the channel. You're not obligated to do that though. You know, you can go and buy it from wherever you want. But what I want to say to you is I think this machine is worth it. I would highly recommend it. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to ask them in the comments section and I will get back to you and I will give you my honest opinion on it. And if you have enjoyed this review, I would really, really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and check out all of our other content out there. I'm always doing live engraving sessions. I'm always willing to share. I don't gatekeep information. I'll give it to every single one of you guys. So yeah, follow the channel and I hope you enjoyed it guys. And thank you so much for getting this far and watching the review for the ACMA P3 laser engraver.